10 Barbadian Songs History Through Sound Barbados, a tiny island in the Caribbean Sea, is full of sonnet riches. Even though many within the region believe it has little indigenous music, it does possess a host of locally crafted songs which play out in a complex way in being Beijing. This presentation will look at 10 important songs which have all helped shape how Barbadians practice their identities. For many, the music culture of Barbados began with the arrival of the British and the Africans. These two groups and their mingling on the plantations created a completely new way of life. In terms of music, the Europeans brought their melodies, instruments and harmonies and the Africans brought their rhythm and amazing creativity. This production of a new culture from Africans and Europeans is what is termed Creolization. But before I look at John Belly Mama, which is a creolized form, I want to start at number one by looking at the European hymn, And Can It Be? And Can It Be? was written in the 18th century by Charles Wesley, one of the founding fathers of the Methodist Church. This hymn, and hymn singing in general, are still relatively popular in Barbados today, especially among those born into the Anglican church tradition. I chose this hymn because it represents a typical hymn. Generally, hymns are strongly diatonic, meaning they are in a particular key, with no jumping between keys. In this case, G major. In hymns, Rhythms are not complex, and melodies generally fall on the beat. When it comes to time signatures, most hymns are in simple time, 3-4 or 4-4. Four, four. Let's take a listen to this hymn. From the recording, we can hear how all the phrases are set out in multiples of four, with the verse being, and the chorus being. Hymn singing is part of the foundation of Beijing music, with most popular styles such as soca still being diatonic and in simple time. However, there's a big difference rhythmically, and by looking at our number two song, John Belly Mama, we get an idea of the other piece of this foundational Beijing music puzzle. John Belly Mama, according to the important book, Folk Songs of Barbados, is a traditional children's song. It is possibly the most well-known folk song in Barbados. John Belly Mama is a clear product of what was known as creolization. That is the mixture of African and European cultures to produce a new culture. For example, the rhythm of the melody of John Belly Mama is quite different to And Can It Be because it has a lot more syncopation, which is seen to be coming from this Western African culture. Let's take a listen.
in the song, we also hear call and response. Call and response, in case you were wondering, is when a soloist and a group interchange. It is one of the key music making elements within Western African music culture. So in John Belly Mama, though it's not always performed this way, we have the line, come down when I call you, being sung by the soloist, and come down being sung by the group. The widespread performances of songs like this, which have lots of offbeat syncopation and call and response, especially before independence, set the stage for a lot of the indigenous Beijing music which came after. Many of the songs from here onwards display the characteristic mixing of African and Western European elements. The two previous songs were taken from the Barbadian colonial period. This song was written several years after. Beautiful Barbados was composed specifically for Barbadian independence by a renowned Beijing composer, Emil Straker, whose work with folk music and calypso had brought him considerable fame during the 1960s when this song was written. Beautiful Barbados is a song on the list which best represents a break from the colonial past as it was written specifically for a newly independent nation. It therefore speaks to all the other songs which will come after. Musically, we hear the obvious influence of European harmony and structure as the song is in major with even numbered bars. Let's take a listen. In keeping with this idea of independence, a few years after Beautiful Barbados came out, a new indigenous popular music emerged that captured the country's imagination. Much like ska in Jamaica, this music, Spooch, set the tone for a new nation. Spooch is said to have been created by Jackie Opal through his work in 1969 with the Troubadours. While his songs from this album are played occasionally, I want to look at Drink Milk which is not by Jackie Opal, but by the Drayton Stew, because this song is a much clearer example of what Spooge sounds like. The thing that defines Spooge more than anything is the Spooge rhythm. The rhythm is played on a cowbell and doubled on the side stick on the snare drum. In addition to the standard spooge rhythm, there are other rhythms that are regularly played within spooge. There's a bass pattern and the famous a chicken guitar pattern. It is called the a chicken pattern because it literally sounds like a chicken, a chicken, a chicken, a chicken. Pooj lost popularity in the mid 1970s, but is still seen by Beijing as a moment of great pride as it was the first indigenously created form from the new nation of Barbados. It is therefore still played at national occasions and for annual independent celebrations which occur in November. As Pooj waned in popularity, Crop Over took over, with Beijing's 
putting their energies in composing Calypso and the recently formed Soka. One of the major artists who fueled the music of this early crop over period was Anthony Gabby Carter. Gabby did not only write carnival music, however, but also wrote some other important songs, which I will deal with later. One of his more popular songs from his crop over compositions, however, is Jack. Jack was a major hit in 1982 and it's a song about Gabby confronting a politician who was suggesting that certain beaches in Barbados be private. The issue of public access to beaches is a very emotional one for most Barbadian citizens, and this song captured their views on it. The fact that it's still quoted, the lyrics from the song, whenever this issue comes up, is a testament to how deeply connected this song is to Bajan identity. Musically, although called the Calypso, this song is definitely a good example of early soca experimentations. The drum pattern is distinctly different to other songs of the time, but the bass is definitely soca. Jack remains today, nearly 40 years later, one of the Mighty Gabby's most popular works within his vast catalog. The other artists, who more than anyone else, helped to build the early crop over music scene, along with the Mighty Gabby, was Tedson Red Plastic by Wiltshire. Baig, as he is affectionately called, is one of the most well-loved artists in Barbados and gained much of his success through crop over. One of the songs which propelled him to where he is now is the 1987 hit, Can't Find Me Brother. This song is included because it is a clear illustration of the red plastic bag writing style. Can't Find Me Brother deals with the escape of Barbadian convicted criminal Winston Hall, but does so cleverly. In the song, Bai calls Hall his brother and then proceeds to say where he searched for him, which were all the areas named Hall, such as Bush Hall, Bai Hall, Kingdom Hall even. So in fact, Red Plastic Bag is speaking to the Hall escape without ever mentioning Winston Hall's name. This smart use of words has earned Red Plastic Bag the title of Lyrical Master. Another one of Bag's songwriting techniques seen here is the use of a strong hook. In Can't Find Me Brother, the hook is constructed in call and response form, which we looked at earlier. This style is very catchy, and the combination of strong hooks which use call and response and clever lyrics are the true embodiment of Red Plastic Bikes' style of writing, which has become a mainstay in Beijing music. Emerton is an example of a modern folk song and is the second song on the list by the Mighty Gabby. It has been performed countless times on Beijing stages since it was first written. The song is about the partial destruction of the Mighty Gabby's childhood home, Emerton. Even though coming to prominence in the 1980s, this song is still considered a folk song. Not necessarily because the time in which it was written, 
but in the musical characteristics that it displays. You tell me to forget that my grandmother was born right there, so all right, I say I shall go. You tell me to forget It is there I want my own children to grow All right, I say I shall go But I hope you understand How I feel about Everton My homeland, my home And I hope you know it's true That I would never forgive you Because look at, look at what you do To my Emerton The song is usually performed by the mighty Gabby with just a guitar accompaniment and himself. This means it falls into the American style folk music, made popular by artists like Joni Mitchell, Bob Dylan, and the Nueva Trova music from Cuba. Musically, Emerton is the only song on this list in a minor key. It is also much slower than all of the songs we have listened to so far. This puts Emerton in a unique category among Bajan songs which we have looked at. The 1980s were not only about crop over in Barbados. Throughout the decade, there were numerous nightclubs with nightclub bands serving the local and tourist populations. For these bands, their goals were always more global than local and they released songs which were heavily influenced by American Top 40 styles. Here is The Time Is Right by one of the groups at the time, Second Avenue. It takes on elements of South African music which was enjoying mainstream success through Paul Simon and Johnny Clegg. This is heard most noticeably in the repeated guitar riff. The song also has a singing style which demonstrates a clear American influence. The 80s bands did not achieve mainstream global success which they set out to do, but their contribution to the Bajan musical soundscape was nonetheless significant. In the early 90s, Sounds Good Studio began to put out material which was distinctly Bajan. The owner and producer, Shane Badu, started to record young Bajan artists who were doing music that was heavily influenced by Jamaican dancehall. However, instead of using Jamaican accents and patois, these artists were delivering in Bajan dialect. This new combination proved a hit locally, and Lil Rick, who was the chief flag bearer of this town, rocketed to national fame, especially among the youth. His song, The Youth, was one of the first of this style to go national. It has a positive message and Jamaican influence music. Sure, he 
Eventually, as other artists came on board, a new genre called Beijing Dub was born, which years later re-emerged as Bashment Soka II with a completely new generation of singers. The 1990s was the most successful time for Beijing produced soca. In 1995, Pump Me Up was released by Crossfire, one of the two Beijing supergroups at the time. It was composed by Edwin Yearwood and produced by Nicholas Franker. This song was unique in that it was slower than other soca songs from the period, and it also had Edwin Yearwood singing not only with influences from the soca tradition, but from the Afro-American tradition as well. I like the time is right, however, the melody from Pump Me Up has syncopation from Calypso and Soca. Also, the rhythm was influenced by dancehall music, that is, the rhythm of the drums. The combination of all the above made the music sound different and it was eventually labeled Raga Soka. This name identified it with Jamaican dancehall culture as well as Soka. It also borrowed from the massive hit from Red Plastic Bag, Raga Raga, which also had a dancehall Soka fusion and was produced by Nicholas Branker. Raga Soka went on to be a mainstay in carnival music and is one of the two subgenres that are most popular in soca music today. The 10 sounds here are not the only important sounds to have come out of Barbados. Sounds such as Raga Raga, the Dixon Slave song, Raga Muffin, and Tempted to Touch, which is one of the biggest soca hits, have not been covered in this list. In fact, if we were to do a complete listing, we would end up in the hundreds. It is hoped here, however, that you have understood how these 10 songs have helped shape and helped Bajans to practice their identity over the years. From the hymns to the folk song, modern 80s songs to Bashman Soca, Barbadians will continue to live their lives through music. This is Dr. Stephen Walker. Thanks for listening.